Hi and welcome to the fifth part of the BlackBerry 10 Cascades tutorial where I will focus on um, getting our app with QML in a different shape. So currently our app is tab based as you see. We can click through um, the tabs and see um, what we have. And we have one page even for add event. And this is basically a little bit of stealing down here our um, touch um, screen. And I changed now one thing already. Um, I brought up a context menu where we probably could uh, exchange the, the model and the list view for previous events or next events. And um, also have the possibility to create a new event. And in this case, I would like to, to rather to push a page for creating an event on the stack of pages than to um, have always here an extra tab for it. So I created a new project called Stacked Event Viewer. Um, it's currently just having the, the default code of a, a stacked event project. And I will now merge this product uh, project with the old um, event viewer code. I have now um, copied the C++ to the new project. And before I change the QML, I would like to take a quick walk through, through this new QML um, before I change it to our application. Um, in the standard generated um, QML, there is a button which will take with an on click to the next um, page, which is defined here as an extra page in QML and which shows a different view than our start page. And here we see with get second page, um, we define how we get the page actually. Um, and it's defined as a property here. So we'll have to find, define our pages as properties. And we also have to attach uh, the pages as a component definition and to be able to access and create them later in JavaScript. So now I'm almost done with the QML editing. Um, as you see, this is the app as we had before. Now this space down here is also used. And there is a, a context menu now, which is already working, which pushes now our um, creation form for new events um, onto the stack and is back. We're in the old view. And with previous events, I want to um, reload the list view with the previous event model so we can see the events which are now in the past. And a quick walk through the QML shows what I have changed. Um, there is now basically only one page as a start page with the label and a list view with um, the next events and um, list item components as we've seen in the last tutorial. And there is a context actions for the context menu, which um, this action item now loads a new page on the stack. And this one should display the previous events and then change to next events. So let's quickly edit this. I have now edited the first menu item. Um, I renamed it to past events instead to of previous events. Um, first thing I'm doing is changing the heading of, of our um, list view to your and the title of this. And um, then if it's past events, we have to say it's, um, that's, uh, if, you, if you click it again, it's next events and we have to load the past events. And if it's not, it's, uh, it's the other way around. And that way we um, create one um, action which triggers on both ways. So let's start this in the simulator. 
and we see our new events we see our past events and we can create a new event and this is a super event of course and we select some date and we click on add event and add event takes us back to the um, view and this is the context menu and if you click on next you see how context menu is now filled with events for the next time and the last thing I would like to show is how to um, also add an application menu to um, our main QML file in order to add a menu, um, an application menu, we need to define a menu definition, which we give a menu definition object in QML. And this menu definition wants a list of actions, where again, action items are added as we have seen it in the um, context actions here where we have an action set and then the action items inside and this time it's just inside of an actions list and of course we need to uh, give this action item now you see the properties which we can edit I will just add a title and an untriggered Now we, for example, could display there some information from, uh, about the application. Now, before we test this in the simulator, we need to make sure that the menu item for the application menu is always in the root container of our main QML file, which is in our case navigation pane and not page. See here is our um, application, and if we um, drag, no, if we drag, um, if we swipe down, we see the menu, menu comes up, and it's uh, gone uh, again when we um, click on something. What we have now created is a custom um, application menu. But there are also some predefined um, items which we can add. Some, for example, a help action with a help action item. And if we want to react on the um, on the untriggered of this item, we have to um, connect to the, to the slot of um, this. And let's try this with untriggered. and simply change in container label heading text to help now we can delete the action item also a settings item for example so we could create um, a settings action 
is a ZX Action item here. And in, a, in the application menu, we can display up to five icons. So let's run this in the simulator. Okay, so this is again our app, and if we pull down the menu, ah, okay, we see um, that now the help icon is um, through the help action item automatically there. Um, the app info is there, and the settings item has also the special um, icon as we see. And with this, I think we're done in this part. And next time, I think I will want to look at um, again at the C++ site and show how we can use uh, multi-threading in QML and Qt and C++ to enhance our applications.